All right, then, if you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 10, and we're going to begin reading in verse 38. Luke chapter 10, and we're going to begin reading in verse 38. The Bible says, Now it came to pass, as they went, as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister have left me alone, to, left me to serve alone? Bitter, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you again one more time this side of eternity, just simply for your word, uh, for how reassuring it is and how fulfilling it is in the days in which we live. God, we remember, uh, please cause us to remember what things are to be first in our lives and what uh, things can come later. God, help us together as a people. Bless your church according to your will. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise for it, for it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, now, we'll be preaching tonight on what we all need what we all need now some of us need different things and uh, I need my seizure medicine and without that I'm assuming I would have multiple seizures uh, I need a haircut I need one desperately uh, yesterday some people uh, don't have their hair cut we all need things and when you think about the level of need, I think a lot of times we're very, very superficial with that. Uh, we're very, uh, it doesn't go very deep into what the need of man is. And I can assure you the need of man is simply this, salvation. Yeah. The need of man is simply summed up in one thing, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. We need yeah. him. Now, if you go to our text with us, and you're very familiar with these three individuals, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, uh, this would later be uh, two things, the Mary, the Mary that would wash the feet of Jesus, and it would be Lazarus who was dead and rose again, I think in John chapter 11, and uh, those individuals uh, were very frequently in the Lord's ministry, and this, as best we can tell, is their first encounter with them. Uh, perhaps they knew him before. Some said they, that they had met on the street. Uh, uh, somebody even suggests that Mary, that broke the alabaster box, uh, was a prostitute. Uh, and so what some people may think, not think, is a first right family, just the people you would enjoy living next door to you, that's the people that the Lord Jesus approached. And I think it's the people we should approach too. It should be individuals not by social status, but by their need of Christ. So with that kind of family understanding, we'll begin in verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went, he entered into a certain village. Now, uh, all through the ministry of Christ, you will find time and time again that he did things in specifics. He did things in a certain way, always, to show whom he is and to deal with each, uh, each believer on an individual basis, uh, to make their awareness of sin on an individual basis, to make their awareness of Christ on an individual basis. And so there was no uh, no accident that he showed up in Mary and Martha and Lazarus's village 
uh, in their town, that's where uh, the Lord God wanted him to be. So he arrives at the exact right time. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Now, I want you to see, apparently, uh, and you don't know, you don't want to uh, uh, get too much suppositions from the Word of God, but it seems that that was the one that would take him in. Uh, if you remember the prophet uh, Elisha, it was the Shumanite woman that made a place for him and received him into her own. Uh, a good question of those of us are, who are redeemed is how willing are you to receive Jesus into your home? And when I say that, I don't mean, mean, mean simply entertaining the preacher. I mean receive him here. I mean receive him within yourself. You know, uh, one thing about people that uh, a lot of time family is they come to stay. And uh, that's the kind of relationship we need to have with Christ. Not, not, not limiting our days with him, but whatever is available, whatever you want, here it is. And so he goes in uh, to Martha's house, and later, I believe, we'll see this became a routine thing for her, for him, and he was even criticized for it at one time. But she received him, verse 39. And she's had a sister called Mary. Now, anybody with siblings know how siblings can be. Now, uh, me and Judy always fight, fought like cats and dogs, but don't let someone else say anything about us because then you had both of us to deal with. And so this, uh, this dissension between the two, I think was natural sibling rivalry. Now, uh, if I was up tending to the dishes and cooking and Judy was sitting over there on the couch, it'd make me mad too. And so Martha's reaction was a natural reaction, but Martha was reacting in the flesh. We cannot look unto Christ as a general man. We cannot look unto our service to him as being a, a friend. We have to look at him as the Lord God Almighty. And Martha was focused on Mary when she should have been focused on Christ. Now, that, that's a huge thing today, how we order our lives, is what are we focused on? Are we focused on money? Are we focused on family? And certainly, we should give our family attention, but at the end of the day, our focus is to be Christ. That, that is to what we're focusing on. So, uh, Martha was upset. But Martha, cumbered, uh, verse 40, but Martha was cumbered about, uh, well, let me get the rest of verse 39, which also said at Jesus' feet, and heard his words. Now, we live in a very fast-paced day. Everything is instantaneous. Everything happens now. And uh, no time to wait. But I want you to see the very best thing for us sometimes is just to sit at the feet of Jesus. Let the dishes go. That's what Martha should have done. And just sit at the feet of Jesus. And when you're the type of personality that I am, sometimes that's very, very hard to do. Typically, I stop when I'm very, very tired, and that's when I stop. And, you know, uh, that's not giving much energy of your energy to the Lord, is it? If you only stop and pray when you absolutely are completely fatigued, you're not giving the Lord Jesus the cream of the crop. You're not giving him the best of your time. And, and so we find that Mary chose to sit at the, at the feet of Jesus, hanging on every word he said. And I fully believe it's because she knew the time was limited. You know, your real time with Christ is very limited. The Holy Ghost shows up when he wishes and you know what? He, he leaves when he wishes as well. So if you're meeting with him, take time to do it. Uh, put the other things off for a few minutes and, and just commune with the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't think it was that Mary wasn't going to help. I think that she had her priorities in check. 
and she was going to do the bidding of the Lord Jesus Christ. She was going to do what Christ would have her to do first. Verse 40. But Martha was cumbered about, uh, but Martha was cumbered about much serving. Now, we, we see this word serving here, and she had her service in the wrong spot. Uh, did somebody have to cook the mail? Sure. Did somebody have to clean it up? Sure. But the, the focus was to be on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, fix, fix the mail when Christ is done. Uh, they live in a, a small village. Go, go buy you a piece of fruit. But we are not geared that way. And I would say in 2022, it's far worse now than it was then. Uh, it's almost as though the Lord has to compete for our time. And that ought not to be among God's people. And, and so we find that Martha, when she should have been at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, was out doing other things, trying to fix the meal, trying to serve the meal, trying to clean the house. But Martha was comforted about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost, that, dost thou not care that my sister have left me alone, left me to serve alone? Bitter therefore that she helped me. Now, she did two things here that, you know, and I've often wondered if at this point if, if Martha was even saved because to me, and again, we all get in this shape, but to me, she didn't even understand the mind of God. She didn't understand uh, what was truly important in this life because she says two things. She says, first of all, uh, she left me alone to do the serving. Now, Whatever you choose to do, whatever you're bidden to do in the work of Christ, do it. Don't fuss about it. If it's your, if it's your lot to fix the mill, fix it like you were fixing for a king and do it without grumbling. Um, and I praise God for it. In this church, we don't have a lot of grumbling, but I've been in churches where they did. And uh, no matter seemingly what you did, you couldn't make them happy. Grumbling over their portion of the service of God. You know, that doesn't earmark a person of God, does it? it? It really doesn't. If you grumble about your lot, how could you be pleased with it? And then the other thing that she said, she asked the Lord, she said, bid her to come help me. She wanted Mary to leave the feet of Jesus and learning of the goodness of God to do everyday chores. That's not, that's not an invitation of the redeemed. That, that is not somebody, that, that's not sound spiritual advice from anyone. You know, uh, you know, uh, why, I, you know why I believe, uh, and sometimes, again, I'll have to agree that verse is a little taken out of text, but the Bible says, <coughs> Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. But with that, with that said, um, that's what they were doing. Well, that's what Martha was doing. She was forsaking the Lord Jesus to go in and cook and clean. Uh, and we all say, well, I would never do that. And, and I certainly thought many times I would have loved to see the personal ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ but in our natural state, would we have done any better? And so Martha thought she needed Mary. Verse 41. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. You know, I, I bet that got her attention, don't you? Uh, would to God, and, and I've had it, experienced it down through the years when... It's, Larry, what are you doing? Uh, has he ever had to, make, had to make you aware that you're just spinning your wheels? He's, he's done that, that, that I'm wasting more time on things of this world than on spiritual things. Martha, Martha. And, and uh, I believe that got her attention. I believe that that uh, kind of caught her by surprise. Maybe made her realize that she wasn't focusing 
on the things that she ought to be focusing on, what she needed. You know what? The Lord Jesus Christ did not need a meal. He needed servants. <coughs> he didn't need the best thing that Martha could pull out of the kitchen. He needed someone that would listen to the truth. Uh, and I believe when he said, Martha, Martha, it caught her off guard. Uh, and, and I've had to have the very same experience in my life when I thought everything was going well. And, and, and you know, sometimes the Lord just get a hold of me and shake me good and said, Larry, what are you doing? That's the type of experience that Martha had here. Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Now, I personally don't feel this was uh, just speaking of the house chores. I believe that she was troubled about many things, is how the Lord Jesus Christ put it. You remember before the Lord saved you how you were troubled about your soul? How, how burdened you were about the sin in your own life? It, it's very troubling. Uh, when the Lord sincerely started dealing with me about salvation, I was miserable for about four or five days. I, I, I'll be honest, I, I, truly, I, I truly did not sleep at night. And so troubled, so burdened down, because I knew of a certainty I was going to hell. And I was very, very troubled. I often believe that Martha was in that same situation because he said many things. It just wasn't the dishes and it just wasn't the meal. He says, Martha, I perceive that you're troubled about many things. And then she, he, he emphasized this, but one thing is needful. You, you know, everything that can be summed up in this whole life uh, I've lived 53 and a half years. The only, thing is, the only everlasting thing I've ever known is the Lord Jesus Christ. My parents are both gone. My sister is gone. My two half-brothers are gone. There's been no constants at all except Jesus. That's the, that's the one thing in this life that matters. Do you know Jesus? Now, the devil will try to pull your attention in every other direction that he possibly can. Men, you and I, all of us have to get out and make a living. We're, we're under the Adamic curse, and we have to get out, and we have to make a living for our families. But sometimes, you know what? That consumes too much of my time. It, it consumes too much of, what, of who I am. And when that happens, you've got to put it in check. You have, to, you have to place it, uh, some limitations on it. Because one thing is needful. One thing matters in the entirety of this life. Do you truly know Jesus? That's, that's the sum of the whole matter. If we live to be 106 years old, the only thing that really matters is do you know Jesus? And at the end of the day, uh, when we're pushing up daisies somewhere, that's all that's going to matter. That's the only eternal peace that goes with us. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? So the Lord says, but one thing is needful. And Mary have chosen that good part. Now, I want you to notice that little word in there, part. Uh, what part of the day do you work? <coughs> For me, it's usually about somewhere between 9 and 10 hours. I, leave, I try to leave a little before 7, and good days I might get home by 3, bad days it might be 5. That's a long, long day, is it not? That, that part is the majority of the waking hours, is it not? So what part belongs to Jesus? Now, I'm assuming that this was some kind of evening meal, and maybe on into the night, she was there in that part. She chose the part with Jesus. She had chosen to be with the Lord Jesus Christ for that allotment of time, and what could be better? And, and that's what we should do, is we, we think about the time we have, give part of it to Jesus. Notice what he says, 
which shall not be taken away from her. The other thing on that side is this. People will try to take it from you. They'll, get, they'll want to pull your attention somewhere else. They'll want you to do things for them. And listen, it's not going to be things that you hate to do. It'll probably be things you enjoy to do. But that time belongs unto Christ. <laughs> what part are you giving him? What, what part belongs? When he's the only thing in this whole world that matters, what part are you giving to the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, go with me to the Gospel of Matthew just a little, a little further back. Matthew uh, 6. Matthew 6 and verse 46. <coughs> The Bible says, I'm sorry, I was at the wrong place. Go to the Gospel of Luke chapter, the Gospel of Luke chapter uh, 6. Luke, Luke chapter 6, beginning in verse 12. Luke chapter 6, beginning in verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called unto his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom he named, and whom also he named apostles. Now I want you to see. Uh, the time the Lord Jesus Christ spends in prayer. Now, we're talking about time that you set aside for Jesus. What's important to do with your time in this life? And it said that the Lord Jesus went out and that he prayed all night and chose 12 of his probably hundreds of disciples who would also be apostles. Now, uh, that, that seems pretty simplistic in one sense, but I'll be honest, I've never prayed that long, have you? I, I don't honestly know if I've ever even prayed a whole hour in sincere prayer to God. But we find the Lord Jesus Christ comes, and he prays all night, and, and he chooses these twelve. And, and that, again, seems pretty simplistic, but who was among those? Judas. Now, being the very God's son, he knew exactly what Judas was going to do. He knew exactly whom Judas was from the first day that he walked up and said, Hello, I'm Judas. I would like to join your band. From the very beginning, he knew Judas, and he had to choose him to be this close to him. He had to choose him to be one of the twelve. You know, you have to focus on Christ a whole lot when the will of Christ is not what you want. You remember when uh, the Lord Jesus uh, uh, prayed in the Garden of Eden? He said, let this cup pass from me. Now, I personally don't believe he was as asking for exemption from death. I believe he was, he was dreading the thought of ta tasting my sin and your sin and all the sin of the elect that he was going to experience that, and then as a result of that, for the very, very first time ever, he was going to be divided among from his father and not be able to fellowship with him anymore. And you get through those times by prayer. And not just little mimi mick prayers. You know, uh, even our kind of people sometimes get into what the Bible calls vain repetitions. And, and that's all they are. Uh, you know, that's when, when you need Christ a great deal, that's not going to get much done. And so we find that he prays and certainly be it's always in the end being very accepting of the will of the Father. He calls Judas to be his own and we know how that finds out, uh, how that runs out. So sometimes what we need is prayer. We need to pray. We, we need to pray for our children and our grandchildren. Yeah. 
We need to pray for redemption to come to people that meet with us. That, that, that's what we need to do. Because again, at the end of the day, that, that's the need of the hour, is to be saved, to be born again. That's what everyone under the sound of my voice either has or they need in one situation or the other. And, and so we find that the Lord Jesus Christ, very accepting of the Father's will, did the exact same thing. The Gospel of Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, and we're going to begin reading uh, in verse 28. Luke chapter 9 and verse 28, the Bible says, And it came to pass about eight days after these sayings, which is about a week, how we count days, and he took Peter and John and James and went into a mountain to pray. Again, what they needed was prayer. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, meaning Christ dying, which he should, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter... And they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood by him. Now, I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, as was many, many times when the apostles should have been on the ball, they were asleep. Uh, and it would be easy to criticize that group of individuals, but listen, we're spiritually asleep most of the time. Yeah. And uh, the Lord has to give us a big shake sometime. So they, walk, they woke up in the middle of this, this long nap, and they see the Son of God revealed as He will be in heaven, as He was in heaven before He came here. His countenance, the, I think Matthew's Gospel says, shone like unto the sun, and He stood there in the overwhelming image of who He was. Listen, you don't get to spend times like that with Christ by giving it that much effort. You know what you need tonight? Christ. You know what? If you're saved, you know what you need? You need Christ. If you're lost and on your way to hell, you know what you need? You need Christ. And we find that's exactly who's emphasized here is simply the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, verse 31, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which should be accomplished, which should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood by him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here, and let us, uh, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. Now, there's most of us, much of the time, not even aware of what we're saying. Uh, you know how you become aware? Being with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what will make you caution your words? Spend an extra time with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you remember his experience with a Samaritan woman? Man, there's a whole lot of things he could say to her, wasn't it? There, there's a whole lot of things Baptist people would have said to her. But he didn't even address her sin till much into it when he says, go call thy husband. And, and she said, I have no husband. Ye have well said ye have no husband, for you've had five husbands. And the one you're with now is not thy husband, and that ye have well said. And so I want you to see that we... He knows us. He knows what our needs are. And the only, the only thing to, to gain, huh, gain a pleasing status with Lord Jesus Christ is to spend time with Him. What's your need tonight? 
uh, think about a lot of different things, do we? Don't we? Uh, some people would say we need to win Passover. Some others may say, well, I need to go to work tomorrow. I need uh, to be done with school for the semester. I need, I need. But what, what is the one thing that we really need? The Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, I fully believe that will take your fears away. <laughs> it will make everything okay. If you can do, if you can do something great, and if you're not able, if you know Jesus, either one is okay. Do, do you truly know him? That's all we need. And you need to give it great thought. Uh, Every day is slipping by. Yeah.